In this lecture, I am going to discuss about Laravel database migrations. What is migrations? Migrations is a file where we define the schema for our database tables, which is actually the blueprint of our database tables. And with migrations file, we can generate tables inside our database instead of creating it manually. And why we need migrations file in Laravel? Suppose multiple developers working in a project and each developer creating tables in their local machine. Then, how the other developers will get the tables? The other developers will get the tables from the migrations file, which will be in the source code. Laravel by default provides us some migrations file, which are under this database migrations folder. Here are the migrations file provided by Laravel by default. Now, I'm gonna tell you how we can run this migrations file. So we can run this migrations file by running php addition migrate command. Before running this command, you have to make sure that you have defined your database credentials in your .env file. I already created this, this database in our php my admin and I provided the database details here. Now if I run php addition migrate command, then it will run all the migrations file which is under this database migrations folder and it will generate tables inside our database. So it is uh, running the migrations file and if I refresh our database now we will see the tables you see we have these tables. Now I'm gonna tell you how we can generate new migrations file. If I check laravel documentation so let's go to laravel.com and then let's click on this documentation link and then I'm gonna click database and then migrations link so we can generate new migrations file by running php addition make migration and then the migrations file name right so let's generate a new migrations file for post table so let's run php addition make migration and the migration file name will be create and then your table name table name will be post and then underscore table so it will generate new migrations file inside our database migrations folder so it is taking some time i think yeah migrations files created successfully now if i check our database migrations folder here we have this new migrations file and here we have the table name and here we have this id and timestamp column so laravel by default added these columns and this timestamp actually created it and updated columns and inside this down method we have this drop exist method and with this drop exist it will remove the tables from our database and inside this up method we have this schema.create method which will create the tables inside our database now i'm going to tell you all of the different type of column we can generate inside our database tables with the migrations file so all the column types are available inside the documentation you can read the documentation so here are the available column types you can check each of them so now for our post table i'm going to add a new column called title and the type will be string and you can also provide the length for the character suppose I'm giving 200 character for the title then I can define the character length here and if you want to make this title nullable then what you can call you can call nullable method here to make this title nullable okay so I don't need nullable for this title so I'm removing the nullable from here and this is column type string and then we can also add column type text so let's add column type text with column name description and we can also add boolean suppose there is a column called is feature or feature So the column name will be feature and the type of this column will be boolean. You can also the I mean you can also provide the default value for the column. So let's say the default value for this column will be false. 
you can also add enum field so let's search for the enum field there is the enum field let's open it in a new tab and then we can define the enum field like this way suppose inside our post table there is a column uh, column called status which will be active or inactive and we can provide the default value for this also let's say the default value will be active you can also provide lots of other column types which are available in the documentation you can also provide I mean you can also provide date type you can also provide decimal float integer lots of column types available here you can create the column inside your database tables so I created this post my sense file I mean my sense file for the post tables now what I will do I will run the my sense file to generate tables inside our database so from our project code let's run php addition migrate again this will run the latest migrations file you see our post migrations file run right so if I check our database tables I mean if I check our database now we will have the post table you see now we have this post table and now I will tell you how we can revert back our migrations right so if I check the documentation we can roll back our migrations file by running php artisan ok let's check the code what is the code or command yeah we can run php artisan migrate rollback to rolling the migrations back to his actual position so we can also provide the steps there suppose we want only the last one to be rolled back then we can provide the step here suppose I want to roll back the last one then I can provide the step one here this will roll back only the last migration file you see it is rolling back the push tables migration file if I check our database now we will not see our push tables but we have the other tables because I roll back the last one if you want to roll back all that migration file then you can simply run php addition migrate roll back this will roll back all the migrations file ok so I think you are now able to create migrations file you can run the migrations file and you can roll back the migrations file now I'm going to tell you how you can add new columns to your existing tables right so to add new column to your existing table you can create a new migrations file suppose I want another column to our post table so for this what I will do I will create a new migration file php addition make migration and suppose I want to add a new column called anything suppose I want to add a new column called total rights then what I will do I will create a new migration file called add total likes to our to post table ok so I am generating this migrations file for adding a new column to our post table migrations file so let's check the new migrations file here is the new migrations file and here we have this table defined here and then what I will do I will simply add new columns to our post table so table and this will be type of integer and the column name will be total likes ok and when we will roll back the migration this should remove the total likes column so what I will do I will drop the column so let's drop the column from this down method this will be table and then drop column and we can provide array here ok so this will add 
new columns to our post table and if you want to add the total likes column after a specific column then you can provide after here and you can define the column name here so I want to provide the total likes column after status column then I can provide the status column name inside this after method okay now let's run all the my actions files again by running php addition migrate so it is running all the my actions file now if I check our database now we have all the tables if I check our post table we have the total likes column along with the other columns right now I'm going to tell you how we can modify a column right so to modify a column what we need to do let's check the documentation so how we can modify a column I think we need to install a package so let's check the documentation or is that yeah there is column modifier so Okay, this is modifier not modification yeah modifying column before modifying a column you must install doctrine slash devil package so let's run this command from our project root and install it so I installed doctrine devil package now I'm going to modify a column then how we can modify the column for this what we can do we can create a separate migrations file so let's generate a new migrations file php addition make migration and let's create a new migrations file to update our description column so I'm creating the migrations file like this update description column update description in post table hit enter it will create a new migrations file let's check our migrations folder so here is this so what I will do I will um, I'm going to update our description column right so what I will do I will provide the column name so right now what is the type of our description column our description column type is text right so I'm going to update it to long text so I'll provide long text and I'll remove this from here and we need to call this change method because we are going to I mean we are going to modify our column with this license file that's why we need to call this change method and this change method will be available after installing doctrine devil package and when we will roll back then this column type should be text right instead of long text so this will modify the column type and this will again revert back to its actual column type which is defined inside this migrations file now let's run the migrations file again okay before running the latest migrations file let's check what is the column type right now so if I see the structure so I think the column type for the description is text right so let's run php addition migrate again this will run the latest migrations file and let's see so our update description my action successfully run now let's check the column type you see now the column type is long text so we successfully modify the column type you can also modify the column name you can add the modified column name here instead of this description you can provide short description so you can modify your column name column type with this doctrine devil package now I'm going to tell you how we can add I mean how we can add foreign key constraint with migrations file 
so what I'll do I'll create another migrations file php addition make migration and this time this will be add user id column user id column to post table so migrations created successfully now let's check the latest migrations file and here i'm going to add new column and the column name will be user id so this will be big integer i think so let's check the documentation how we can add foreign key constant so let's search foreign yeah here is the foreign key constant so i'm going to add a new column of type unsigned integer and this will be user id and then to add foreign key constant what you need to do we need to call table foreign and we need to provide the foreign key name i mean foreign key column name and then we want to provide the reference this so this user id will be the reference to our users table id field okay and we can also provide on cascade delete and on update delete if you want to remove the data on delete your users then you can also provide this so let's copy this and paste it here so what it will do actually if your user users deleted from users table then this will also delete the post from the post table for the specific users which is deleted from the users table we do not need to add this on update okay so this will add foreign key constant and from the down method you can remove the foreign key constant so what we can do we can just simply drop the foreign key constant from here this is this down method so that's it now let's run php addition migrate again and let's check our database now you see we have this new column user id and this is unset big integer and i think we have the foreign key constant from this i mean for this user id you see the user id is the reference to the id field of our users table so we successfully i mean we successfully created migrations file we successfully modified column also we successfully created foreign key constant so that's it for laravel migrations i think this will be very helpful for your project if you are beginner or if you have some knowledge in laravel so thanks for watching this video